A tripod is one of the most essential pieces of gear for documentary filmmaking. Alongside a camera, lens, and microphone, a tripod has to be one of the first pieces of gear you buy. But with tripods ranging from $40 to $4,000, you may be thinking, what does that extra cash really get you when you're out in the field? In this video, I'll break down what you should value in a tripod when it comes to documentary filmmaking. I'll share my current lineup of tripods. And finally, I'll reveal why I bought this $3,800 tripod and why it has changed the way I film documentaries. Hey everyone, I'm Austin Meyer. I'm a documentary filmmaker, National Geographic Explorer, and on this channel, I share the field-tested skills, mindsets, and lessons that have helped me on my journey as a documentary filmmaker. Unlike a lot of filmmakers here on YouTube, I do not consider myself a gearhead. I'm more of a gear minimalist. <laughs> I want to find some high-quality gear that works for me and then pretty much tune out every gear review that floods my homepage. I don't accumulate gear in case I may need it. I get gear when I know I need it like right now. And over the past decade, I've had that feeling with tripods numerous times. So if you're ready to invest in a tripod for your next documentary, here are some things to think about. Firstly, a good tripod makes all the difference. I know that spending money on a tripod is not sexy or exciting, but neither is spending 40 bucks on a super cheap tripod only to realize that your beautiful camera is toppling to the ground. A tripod is one of those gear investments that will retain its value over years. So aim for the best one that you can afford right now. Here are some qualities that make a tripod good for documentary filmmaking. The first is speed of setup and adjustment. When investing in a tripod for documentary filmmaking, speed is critical. A tripod that enables rapid setup and quick adjustments is essential for capturing spontaneous moments and changing scenes. Features like quick release plates, a fast leg adjustment design, and a leveling bubble can save you so much time when you need to adapt on the fly. The second quality to consider is the tripod's stability and weight capacity. Make sure the tripod you choose can support the weight of your camera and additional equipment. I keep my equipment as light as possible, so a tripod with a massive weight capacity is usually overkill for me, but I still like to give myself some extra wiggle room just in case my camera rig grows over time. Now the stability of your tripod is a balancing act with portability and durability. You gotta consider the tripod's portability especially for on-the-go documentary shooting. Is this a tripod that you're going to be carrying a lot? Are you gonna be flying a lot with it? Before buying a tripod, see if you can get your hands on it to just see what it feels like to move around with for an hour or two. And lastly, think about versatility and adjustability. Many tripods don't have a fluid head, but that's crucial. And it's crucial to have good quality that makes leveling easy and hands and tilt super smooth. Most professional filmmakers often prefer tripods with a bull system because they make it easy to level and balance the camera quickly. With all that in mind, here are the three tripods that I currently own. This is the first tripod purchase I ever made back in 2017 when I made the leap into freelance life. It's the now discontinued Manfrotto 504 HD head with 535 two-stage carbon fiber tripod system. At the time, this was the most expensive tripod I could afford or that I could imagine paying for. It was $1,000 and honestly, it's pretty solid. Stable without being too heavy, smooth on the tilt and pans, but it also has its issues when it comes to locking functions and the lack of speed adjusting the tripod up and down. These days, this tripod mostly sits in my closet, but I do bring it out to mount a B cam during interviews every once in a while. You know, shout out to this piece of gear because it carried me through five years of strong filmmaking. Thanks, buddy. The second tripod I own is a travel tripod called the Ulanzi F38 Quick Release Travel Tripod. This thing is modeled after the Peak Design travel tripod that was really hot and uh, it's pretty much the same thing except it comes in about half the price. Right now on their website, it is $329.95. Now, I've had this travel tripod for about a year now, and for what it is, I've been super impressed with its capabilities. It's lightweight, packs down small enough to go in my water bottle pocket, and has even held my A7S III with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens during interviews. 
Plus it has these cool F38 quick release plates that I now have on my gimbal, on my YouTube setup, my backpack straps and camera strap, which makes it super easy to take my mirrorless around to different support systems. Now this Ulanzi is not a video tripod where I'm gonna be doing a bunch of smooth pans and tilts or putting a cinema camera on it, but for what it is, it works. But the main attraction of the video, my go-to tripod and the one that has Change the way I film documentaries is the Sactler Activate Side Load System with Flowtech 75 tripod and mid-level spreader. This tripod is a pretty, pretty penny. We're talking $3,823.75 over on B&H right now. And that's why it took me forever to decide to buy this thing. But the more I saw it in action, the more I thought this thing is just, it's worth the cost. Back in 2019 and 2021, I was filming a Hulu documentary series called Dear Santa. And I was working alongside a great Bay Area DP named Mike Abella. Mike Abella had the Sactler while I rocked my old man Frodo next to him. And anytime we were covering a scene or interview together and needed to adjust the height of our tripod, it felt like I was moving in quicksand compared to Mike. Just look at this difference in how these tripods adjust from waist height to standing height. With so many tripods like this Manfrotto, you have to undo and fasten multiple latches. While with the Sackler's Flowtech legs, it's just a quick flip up, flip down, it's unreal. And when it comes to the leveling of the tripod head, same kind of thing on the Manfrotto, I'm unscrewing and screwing, whereas the Sackler's Activate head has this innovative little flipper thing. I think that's the official terminology, flipper thing. So you use the flipper thing, check out this big bubble to make sure you're level and boom, you're done. After working with Mike on these productions and seeing him use the Sackler, I was sold. He could literally cover a scene on a tripod in ways that I never imagined just because of how cumbersome and slow most tripods are when adjusting heights. This is not to mention just how durable and smooth this thing is. So unless you expect your tripod to get run over by a plane or car, like Mike's apparently did when we flew to a shoot in Illinois together, you can expect this tripod to hold up for a long time. My only two issues with this tripod right now are that I can't get this little carrying handle to lock in and the grooves where this handle attaches to the tripod head are stripping more than I'd expect after 18 months. So if Sackler is watching, feel free to, to hit me up about that. <laughs> But for real, this tripod is changing the way I film documentaries. Over the past couple of years, I've been so inspired by documentaries like Father, Soldier, Son, Ascension, All That Breathes. These are films that have very little camera movement. For pretty much the entire movie, the camera is on sticks. The cinematographer finds a beautifully composed frame and just lets the action play out within that frame. And watching that makes me so happy. It's just like so aesthetically pleasing. And before having this tripod, I would have never tried this because covering a scene on a tripod would just be too frustrating. But now with the Sackler, now that I am able to adjust so quickly to the action taking place around me, I'm currently working on a documentary project in this exact style. And it's been so fun and challenging and creatively rewarding. If you want all the spec breakdowns of these tripods, no doubt you can find those on some other YouTube channels, but hopefully this video adds some value to the conversation about how these tripods perform in the field for a full-time documentary cinematographer. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, go out and tell some stories.